Hey everybody, it's Kendra. Welcome to my channel if you're new and welcome back if you've been here before. My video today is going to be part two of my kombucha series. So this video is actually how to make kombucha. Part one, which I'll link down below, I talked all about kind of like an overview of kombucha, all that stuff, but now I'm gonna actually show you how to make it. So today I'm gonna show you how to take fermented kombucha. I have a big batch, one of those guys back there. One of those is two gallons and it's finished. It's finished fermenting. So I'm gonna show you how to take that finished kombucha and flavor it. And then I'm gonna also show you how to restart that and get it going for a new batch. Now, if this is your first time, of course you're not gonna have fermented kombucha to flavor. So you're just gonna do the second part. But I think it's important to actually show you sort of my process and see exactly how I do it because this process only takes me 45 minutes and I feel like I've really gotten it down because of doing this process. Okay, let's discuss ingredients. So the main ingredients in kombucha, we need tea, we need sugar, we need water, and we need culture. Super, super, super basic. Let's talk tea. Now, when I say tea, I'm not talking like chamomile tea or herbal tea, any of that stuff. You can play around with that, but that's not gonna be your main sort of go-to tea source. When I'm talking tea, I'm talking anything from the Camellia sinensis plant, which includes white tea, green tea, oolong, black, and puer tea. They all come from the same plant. How cool is that? I had no idea. I learned that last year. So anyway, the tea that I use is by this brand Positively. I use a blend of half black and half green. The black I use is this Positively Assam, and the green is the organic uh, pinhead gunpowder. Both of these are organic. I buy them from Amazon. They're maybe like 15 to $20 four pound of loose tea. I do prefer loose tea, I don't use uh, tea bags, but tea bags are totally fine if you want. Next, you're gonna need some sugar. So I get my sugar from Costco. Uh, they sell these great 10 pound bags of organic cane sugar. If you do want cane sugar, I would not recommend using like coconut sugar or date sugar or any of that stuff. You can play around with that, but I don't know how it's gonna work. Um, so yes, you do want to use cane sugar. Also, you need water. I do filter my water. Um, I have a little pitcher with a water filter, so I use that. Also, you are going to need a SCOBY, which is the symbiotic colony of bacteria and yeast, which looks like this, and it looks really, really gross. Um, and then you're also gonna need some starter liquid, which is basically just already brewed kombucha. So you can see on the bottom, there's some starter liquid there. Um, I would say for about a gallon, you don't need this much scoby, that was a lot of scoby. Um, just rip off like a chunk of that. And then maybe every gallon you're doing, I'd say at least like two cups, maybe two cups of starter liquid. Um, Cause I like to give it like a nice, good send off. Let's call it that. Um, Cause I really want it to be like a nice strong culture to just really get everything going. Okay, let's talk about what you're gonna actually brew your kombucha in. You need some type of vessel. If you're just starting off, you could use a one gallon glass jar like this. This, you know, it doesn't have a spigot. So that's my one little downfall for this, but this is totally a fine way to start. Now, if you like kombucha like I do, um, I use, these big vessels, these big glass vessels with spigot. So each of these two in the middle, these are exactly the same. These are three gallons and this is two. Well, they can hold three gallons, but I only brew two in each. So these come with a spigot, but the spigots they come with are really, really crappy. So I always replace them with these nice uh, stainless steel spigots. So I would recommend if you are choosing to brew in a vessel with a spigot, change the spigot. It'll make your life so much easier. And actually just brewing like this is so wonderful and it makes your life so easy with the spigot. Also, I'd highly recommend picking up some of these little adhesive thermometers. These are very helpful. Um, temperature is actually very important with kombucha. So it's really nice to sort of see what temperature you're at um, to sort of gauge like how long it's gonna take to brew. And then of course, as you can see on each of them, I have a little uh, dish towel. These are just like cute, clean dish towels I get actually from this fabulous place in Paris uh, called Hema. It's actually a Dutch, sort of dollar store type uh, type deal. Amazing towels, and I just think it's very, very cute. Also, you're gonna need something to secure your towel. These black bands are actually those kind of like headbands that you could wear um, 
to keep your bangs back like if you're exercising. So this combination for me is wonderful. Basically the cover you want, you need to be able to have oxygen going into the brew, but you don't want bugs and dust and all that yucky stuff to get in there. Okay, other things you're gonna need. I like to steep my tea in a glass bowl. I do not steep a gallon of tea at a time. I do a quart, I make a concentrate, and then I add it to cool water just because I don't want to sit around for four hours and wait for my tea to cool. So I'll explain exactly how I do that in just a sec. So I steep my tea in a bowl. I use one of these giant uh, tea balls to steep my tea because it's loose tea and this is super, super convenient. It just opens and closes like so. Very nice. Uh, you are going to need a tablespoon measure and also a cup measuring cup. Uh, I like to use a bamboo or wooden spoon to sort of stir things up. Uh, I try to avoid metal as much as possible because a lot of metal is very reactive with the kombucha, but if you get stainless steel, you're usually fine. Other things that are handy, I like to have a ladle, a soup ladle, but I would highly recommend getting one that has a plastic head because once upon a time, I used one that was metal and I broke an entire gallon glass jar full of strawberry kombucha and then my entire kitchen, including into my drawers and into my cabinets, all smelled like kombucha. That was really a pain to clean. Also, you're gonna wanna have some type of funnel to actually put your kombucha into bottles. I really like this one because it has this little strainer in it. That's very helpful. Also, I do tend to use one of these um, strainers as well to just keep all the little extra particles out. Also, if you are flavoring, I like to flavor in these big gallon glass jars. I'm gonna actually show you how to flavor two gallons of kombucha today. And finally, you're also gonna need some bottles. You're gonna need something to actually put your finished kombucha in. Once it's finished, either with the first fermentation process or if you do decide to flavor it, something to put it in after that. Now, I tend to just save my old kombucha bottles and that works great. I just clean them out very, very well um, and just reuse them. So. If you drink kombucha now and you're gonna start making your own, start saving your bottles and have your friends save them for you. Um, one note with bottles, I tend to just use bottles that actually have caps, that screw caps. Um, I don't I don't actually have any of the bottles with like the little flip top guys um, that look really cool. Uh, I don't use those anymore because it's so difficult to control the carbonation and I've often had uh, kombucha volcanoes if I use those bottles. So I don't like to use the bottles that have like the little fancy flip tops. I just prefer normal bottles and caps. Oh, and one last thing that'll make your life so much easier. One of these water kettles, It's they're so, so, so helpful. Okay, another thing that is super, super, super useful for brewing kombucha is this book. This is by far the best book I have found on the subject. The Big Book of Kombucha, absolutely amazing. It's super, super thick, has tons of information. So if you're gonna brew your own kombucha, this is a book I would absolutely recommend getting. Also, another thing that's very helpful to do, just get yourself a dedicated notebook where you can jot down notes about what you're doing from batch to batch with your own kombucha. Maybe you come across a really good recipe, maybe you come across like a really good flavor combination and you wanna remember it. So I highly recommend also jotting down notes about what you're doing. All right, so let's make some kombucha. So this vessel is finished fermenting. I started this baby on April 23rd, as you will see and today is May 3rd, so it's like 10 days, so that's pretty, pretty solid. Now, if you look at this, I'll take this stuff off so you can see it. It looks really weird, right? Let's go in a little bit closer. That's what it looks like, okay? It's kind of bubbly, it looks kind of gross, and that's totally normal. Like, you know, it's not, it's not really a thing of beauty, but it kind of is beautiful in its own way. So every time you make kombucha, you do get a new layer of SCOBY. So you can see here, there are several layers that have formed from the last few batches I've done. So basically today, I'm gonna show you how I take this and I flavor this and then I get a whole new batch going. Okay, so let's make some kombucha. I've just covered this guy up because I don't want any bugs or anything in there. Okay, so this vessel is two gallons. So basically today, I'm gonna be making two gallons of new fresh sweet tea to put into this. And then I'm gonna be taking the already fermented kombucha and flavoring it. So the first thing I do is start new sweet tea. So I'm using my tea ball and I've got my little jars of tea here. Now for kombucha, for every gallon you make, you want three tablespoons of loose tea. So because I am doing two gallons, I need six tablespoons of loose tea. So I'm gonna do three tablespoons each of black and green. So this is my black Assam. And then I'm gonna do three of my green, my pinhead gunpowder green. 
put it in my tea bowl. Okay, then just close up my tea bowl. I already have two quarts of water right here that is hot, so I'm just gonna put that on it. And then I let this steep for 20 minutes. Okay, I'm gonna let this steep for 20 minutes, and in the meantime, I'm gonna move on to actually flavoring this kombucha. So today, I'm going to be doing a gallon of strawberry lemonade and also a gallon of ginger lemon. These two combinations are great. I feel like ginger lemon is just foolproof and always good. Other combinations that are great, I love using beet, um, so I'll just peel and chop up some beets. Um, I like to do beet plain, or sometimes I will do like beet ginger, beet ginger lemon, that's great. Um, another flavor that's really, really good for kombucha is cucumber. I found that if I do cucumber lemon or cucumber lemon and uh, dried elderflower flowers, um, so good. If you've ever had the French liqueur called Saint Germain, Saint Germain, Saint Germain, it tastes just like that. It's super, super, super yummy. But you can totally play around with flavors. Apple is really nice, all that. You could do strawberry on its own. You could do ginger on its own. You could do lemon on its own. There are a bajillion different flavors and the big book of kombucha also has loads of different ideas for flavoring. So what do I do? Basically, I uncover my brew and I give it a good stir. Okay, because I want to sort of mix up all the stuff that's in there. There's yeast, there's bacteria. I just want to give it a good old, a good old whoosh to stir everything up. Oh, also, by the way, how do I know when it's ready? Um, basically, I would say maybe if you're doing two gallons, I would say after about seven days, you're going to want to start tasting it. And once it finally has that kind of slightly sour, sweet, effervescent sort of flavor, then you're good. Um, but you just sort of like learn how to do that. You just kind of gauge it, you guesstimate it, and you just sort of like hone in on what flavor you like for your finished kombucha. Some people like it a little bit more sweet, some people like it a little bit more sour and more fermented. So anyway, I'm gonna start with my strawberry lemonade. So I have a cup of chopped up, cleaned and chopped up strawberries. And then I also have the juice from one Myers lemon. So I'm just gonna put that in my little jar and then I'm gonna fill it up. All right, so my strawberry lemonade, I just capped it up. I'm gonna let this sit for about 24 hours before bottling. My second one today is going to be ginger lemon. So I have juiced about three lemons here, two and a half, three lemons. Yeah, it was two and a half, I think. And then I also peeled and chopped up probably about three inches of ginger. I just kind of like sliced it in thin little slices. So I'm just gonna put that in there and then do the exact same thing Fill it up. Okay, so there you go. Basically, that's all you need to do to flavor it. Very, very easy. Um, I like to do infusions. This is what is called an infusion because I'm leaving the stuff sit together to actually infuse. Um, sometimes when I do ginger, I'll actually run the ginger through my juicer to make ginger juice and then you can bottle it right away. But in this situation, I'm gonna let both of these sit for about 24 hours and then I'll come back tomorrow and I'll bottle it. Um, and then I'll show you guys what to do with that too. And also I wanna point out, so with this, every time you brew kombucha, you do need a bit of your former batch of kombucha in the next batch to start the next batch. So this is what's considered starter liquid. So you see, I still have a SCOBY in there and I've got a lot of starter liquid. So basically if I'm doing, you know, two gallons, probably the first time I start it, I might make a little bit more than two. And then every time after that, I'll only draw off two gallons and then leave about up to my spigot because this will be my good starter for the next batch. Okay, my 20 minutes of steeping time are up. So I'm just gonna take this out, let it kind of drain out a bit. And then I'm gonna set that on top of this jar. So this gallon glass jar already has three quarts of filtered water in it. Um, so I'm gonna need another three quarts of filtered water. I just don't have a second jar to do this in. I used to, but then that was the one I broke. Anyway, now we need to add some sugar. So I've got my big old bag of sugar and this is two quarts. So we use one, uh, one cup of sugar per gallon. So I'm doing two gallons, so I need two cups of sugar. So I'm just gonna put this in 
and then stir it about until it's all dissolved. Okay, that's pretty well dissolved and this has cooled off a little bit, so I'm just gonna shake out as much tea as I possibly can. Um, also, just FYI, if you are a gardener or if you compost, I'd highly recommend saving the leaves and throw these into your compost. Even if you just put these around your plants, it can be very, very good. Uh, tea leaves have a lot of nitrogen, so that's very yummy for our plants. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do, I've got my hot sweet tea concentrate and I'm gonna put it in here. I'm gonna put half of this in here and then I'll put three more quarts of cool water and do it again. So my first batch is done. So basically I'm just gonna take this and dump this in the big guy, carefully. Okay, and then I'm just gonna fill this with three more quarts. And also just FYI, the pitcher that I use to filter my water, this is a Soma. I believe they use like coconut, some type of coconut filter. They're very good, I like them. Um, so anyway, I got my three quarts, my second round of three quarts, and I'm just gonna finish putting the rest of my sweet tea in here. Now, the reason I do this concentrate, like I said, I don't wanna wait for two gallons of tea to cool down. I don't wanna use anything super, super hot with my SCOBY. If I dump two gallons of hot sweet tea in there, it would totally kill my culture. So I don't wanna do that. That's why I mix it with cool filtered water, just so I don't hurt my SCOBY and so I also don't have to wait a bajillion years. Hey, look at that, perfect. Okay, so then I'm just gonna add my second batch. There we go. Also, every time I start a new batch, I put on a new towel to protect it from buggies and dust, and then I secure it with my black band. And then also, finally, the last thing I always do with this batch, I'll put the date on it. So today's date is May 3rd, so I'm gonna use masking tape and a marker and just write May 3rd and then stick it on. There we go, and then I'm just gonna put my little guy back in the corner over here, and that will take probably about 10 more days to ferment. Okay, so here I am, I'm back the next day. I've let about 24 hours pass, and you can already see just the difference in color. Both of these yesterday were sort of like a, a light kind of brown, but now the strawberry lemonade has become a very nice pretty pink, and the lemon ginger has kind of become a bit more of this yellowy tone. All right, now I'm gonna show you very quickly how I bottle and finish off my kombucha. So. This flavored kombucha, we technically could consider this the second fermentation process because we're infusing it. Now, when we bottle it, our goal is to build some carbonation. You can see here, we definitely have some bubbles building, but once we bottle it in the smaller glass bottles, we're gonna really build some carbonation. Now, one thing I always do, I put a raisin, this is my little jar of raisins, I always put a raisin in the bottle because this is gonna give the kombucha a little bit of extra sugar to just help continue the fermentation process and help get everything just, you know, just give it a little more sugar for the yeast to eat and that will in turn create carbonation. So when I bottle it, I use my little plastic I use my little plastic ladle, and I'm just gonna give this a gentle swoosh. Again, this is why I say use plastic, because I once upon a time used metal and had an accident. So I give this a little stir, and then I'm gonna use my little other strainer to just filter out some of the strawberries. And just like that, that's all I do to bottle it. Also, I just wanna point out the color of the strawberries now. They don't look very appetizing. That's because the kombucha has actually gone in and taken out the flavor, the color, all that yummy stuff. So this stuff, you just chuck. And then you just cap it up and you are good to go. And again, gonna do the same process with the lemon ginger. Just gonna give this guy a nice little stir. Get everything mixed around. Oh, this looks so yummy. So as you can see, I have all of my kombucha bottles. I got 14 bottles out of those two gallons. That's usually what I get. Usually I can get seven bottles out of each gallon. Now, I've also taken some masking tape and a Sharpie and just labeled it with the flavor and also with today's date. So now I'm not gonna set these in the fridge right away. I'm gonna let these sit out for about 24 to 48 hours, but about every 12 hours, I'm gonna open them each up. Just quickly crack it open. Um, just because carbonation is gonna to start to build and I wanna release that carbonation. 
it'll seem very, very slight at first, but after, you know, 24, 36 hours, you'll definitely have some good carbonation building up. Now, I have one quick tip for opening these bottles. This will really hurt your hands, okay? If you're, like, opening and closing, opening and closing, you know, every, like, twice a day, every 12 hours, it gets really, really sore because you do want to be closing these pretty tightly. I like to use these gloves, actually, these gloves that have kind of this rubbery silicone plastic stuff on it. This gets such a good grip and it totally protects your hands when you're opening up the bottles. Random thing I totally discovered and I'm so happy I discovered it. All right, so there you go. That is how I make kombucha. I wanted to show you my whole process just so you can sort of see what I do every time I have a new batch of kombucha that is finished. Um, I wanted to show you the flavoring thing because you'll probably be flavoring in the future. And I also, of course, want to show you the bottling stage. Um, another thing I forgot to mention, I just want to talk about like the price per gallon. I did mention an actual bottle of kombucha. If you buy it, it can be like three to five dollars a bottle. I would say per gallon, it's probably only like just the base kombucha, not including like the fruits or vegetables to flavor. I would say it's maybe two or three bucks per gallon, maybe even less than that. I've never actually figured out the actual pricing, but it's super, super affordable. Of course, if you're starting to use like fruits and veg and stuff to flavor it, the price goes up a little bit, but not that much. It's a very, very simple process. It just sort of takes a little time to get your groove down, get your rhythm going, um, and figure out what works for you, which flavors you like, and so on. Also, please, please, please do not hesitate to ask me any questions. I absolutely love discussing kombucha, and if I don't know the answer to your question, I will certainly do some research, and then we will both be learning at the same time. So anyway, thank you so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!